The Heart of Art is sponsored in part by the Texas A&M University Art Galleries, which includes the Stark and Forsyth Galleries located inside the MSC. The galleries provide a variety of opportunities to experience art exhibitions, events, and hands-on activities. More information at uart.tamu.edu. The Heart of Art is brought to you by the Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts at Texas A&M University, bringing innovative and culturally diverse visual and performing arts programming to Texas A&M University and the Brazos Valley. The Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts fosters the creativity of our community via the transformative power of the arts. The Heart of Art, scoping the Brussels Valley for the best artists and bringing them to your radio. Howdy everyone, welcome back to the KMU Studios. My name is Hector Nino and you're listening to The Heart of Art. Today we have a very special show planned for you. Uh, we will be speaking to Raina Middleton Dexter, who is an associate an instructional associate professor at the School of Performance Visualization and Fine Arts. Uh, here she teaches, um, she covers subjects such as costume design uh, and theater. And today we will be speaking about her costume design and what that exactly entails and why she calls it world building. So if that piques your interest, make sure to stay tuned. Uh, and now for the art announcements, I have uh, the University Art Galleries is presenting the Cowboy in Texas Art. And this is an exhibition that is open currently um, up until August. And it takes a look at the iconic cowboy representing the Lone Star State all over the world. Uh, and actually next week on May 25th at 530 uh, they will be having. They will be hosting the author and scholar Michael Grauer, who is the curator of cowboy collections and Western art at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. So I am sure he will have a lot of information that will be beneficial to those attending and those who want to learn more about the cowboy and this um, iconic emblem that represents the Lone Star. Uh, so make sure you go and visit uh, May twenty fifth at five thirty at the J Wayne Stark Gallery in the MSC. All right, let's start my interview with Raina Dexter. Today we have a very special show planned for you. We have Raina Middleton Dexter, who is here with us. She is an instructional associate professor at the School of Performance Visualization and Fine Arts. And her teaching areas include costume design and technology, performance, theater, world dress, and more. <laughs> but today we'll be, fo be focusing on costume design. So if you're interested, make sure to stay tuned. So hi, Reina. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Of course. I love um, highlighting arts that aren't super well known, you know, um, something that people might want to be educated a little more on. So yeah, I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you. All right, so to start off with your background, I know that you got uh, your Bachelor of Arts in Theater at Mount Union College in Alliance, Ohio. So are you from Ohio? I am, yeah. I grew up in Ohio. In fact, only probably a half an hour away from Mount Union. Oh, really? Okay. And did your love for theater begin first, or was it straight into costuming? Definitely a love for theater first. Mm -hmm. um, I think I went into college thinking I would be a performer. Uh, in high school, I was in all of the school plays, um, and it wasn't until college that I discovered costuming and, and sewing. Mm -hmm. I needed a job, and oh. a costume shop was hiring. Um, awesome. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been through similar routes myself. <laughs> yeah, it just was a, a perfect fit once I got there, but no, I, I did not go into college knowing that's what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. And was it a student worker position first? It was, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Um, and then you went on to get your Master in Fine Arts at the uh, Kent State University, right? Um, and what, what was your thesis on? Um, so actually I did designs for uh, a musical, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. Hmm. Um, and so I wrote about my design process uh, right. for that show. Um, it was my first 
big professional design. I had done some smaller pieces, but this was a really big show and a well-known show. Mm. Um, so it was really exciting to have a, a full professional shop that was creating my designs. Oh, wow. And how many designs did you did you make? Oh, that's a big cast. Yeah, do you remember? 35, I want to say. Oh, wow. And that was all you? Or did you have a group of people helping you along? I was the costume designer, um, but we had a, a full shop staff. So I obviously had mentorship from my graduate school professors. Right. Shout out to Susie. Um, <laughs> uh, but we had, you know, a shop manager and cutters and drapers in the shop and stitchers. Um, so oh, wow. a, a whole team of people who made that happen. Right. Well, backtracking a little bit, what was that moment that you realized that you wanted to dedicate your life to theater? I'm not sure if there was a distinct moment. I, mm. I grew up performing. My aunt was a gospel singer. Mm -hmm. And so from the time that I was really small, I was on stage with her, grew up singing in church, um, school plays. Uh, now I get really nervous being in front of a group of people, but I think as a kid, I was kind of fearless when it came to that. And I just loved art. I loved uh, the way that art brings communities together. Mm -hmm, right. um, so I, I think that was a draw for me my whole life. Right. Yeah, I feel like a lot of, of children get their, they get comfortable on stage through their church. <laughs> That's like a really <laughs> big theme that I've been noticing. Well, okay, now that we want to go more into the costume design of things, uh, what does costume design entail? Because I, I think that's might be, I might be a little confused as to what costume design completely entails, right? Because I don't think you're going to be like in the sewing room every day, right? No. Mm -hmm. um, and in the professional world, you might not sew anything that wow. you design, yeah. depending on the scale of the company you're working for. Right. Um, but really where it starts, it, especially in theater, is with the script. Um, mm. So usually you're hired on to a show with a team of designers and a director. You start by reading um, and analyzing that script and then talking about it with your collaborators. And I like to think of it as world building. Mm. Um, you know, and it's not that different in things like video games or film in a, in a lot of ways. Like we have to create a world for our audience, mm -hmm. thinking about what is that aesthetic going to be? Right. Who are the people in this play? And that's where costume design comes in. My job is to give you the people of the play. Right. Um, so you don't think that sewing would be an essential skill to have when costume design or would you think otherwise? I think it's a great skill to have. Yes. Right. Um, I think that there are a lot of different schools of thought on this. My mm -hmm. personal feeling is that my technical knowledge about dress and fabric and the ways that we make something two-dimensional, three-dimensional on a body, the way that it moves, the, the durability of those materials, right. all of my knowledge in those things make me a better designer. Right, that makes sense. You need to know how how the texture is going to work and if it's even possible to do something. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So how do you approach a character to determine what their costume design is going to be? <laughs> That's the of fun of it. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, in some ways I kind of think of it as a, a sort of the art of sociology, psychology, anthropology. Ooh. It's a bit of a mix. You mm -hmm. know, it's the study of people. Right. So I start by thinking about, you know, when this person wakes up in the morning, what's their hygiene? Ooh. Like, how much money do they spend on their clothes? How much time do they spend thinking about getting ready? Um, especially if this is a period piece, do they have help getting mm. dressed? Um, are they the ones helping someone else get dressed? Right. Um, you know, so those are all questions that we have to start really from the, the skin out mm -hmm. in some ways. Wow. I mean, when you think about costume design, I mean, part of my job is thinking about like, what kind of underwear were these people wearing? It just seems silly to think about. Yeah, but we don't really <laughs> usually think about that. Yeah, but, but those yeah. foundation garments are important. Definitely. Um, yeah, so just thinking about all of those things, their age, their money, um, how much time and energy they're putting into the way that they look, their personality, their likes, their dislikes. 
Hmm. And obviously you don't get all that in the script. Right. Um, you get some of it. So a lot of it when you're starting with a script is looking at what people say about themselves and looking at what the other characters say about those people mm. and then trying to find the truth of the character somewhere in there. Right. Finding their personality. Absolutely. Right. Um, I was wondering whether your interest going into costume design affected the way you dress in, in general. Oh, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have I, you analyzed it yet? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I was always a person that was trying on lots of different styles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I look back at like old school photos or something, and I, I think I dressed like a different clique every six months or something. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I think it took a long time for me to figure out how I wanted to pre present myself to the world. And that's a lot of costume design, but it's dress in general. When you live in a society where we can't all know each other on a personal basis, right. we project so much information by the way that we dress. Right. Um, so, you know, I think in a lot of ways, the way that I dress has become more subtle as mm -hmm. I age. Mm -hmm. um, thinking about comfort, thinking about what's appropriate for a professional setting, right. um, but also putting a little personality in yeah, there sometimes. as well. Yeah, here and there. <laughs> yeah. We love that. We love that. I wanted to ask what was a piece of work that had your favorite costume designs and whether it be a play or mm -hmm. any sort of medium, really. Oh, my goodness. That's that's a difficult question. Mm -hmm. um, I love so many things. As an audience member, I love watching like period pieces. Right. Um, I'll have to say right now, Things like Bridgerton really have my attention. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and when that show first came out, there was a lot of chatter in the costume design world because it's not exactly what you would see in fashion plates and historical documentation of the dress of that period. Hmm. There's a definite stylization and artistic interpretation of that time period. Um, and to me, that's the beauty of this art mm -hmm. is taking a time period, but then building a whole fictional world around mm. it. I don't watch it because it's a documentary. I watch it because it's fantasy. Right. Um, and I think the costumes interpret that world really well. Yeah, I love that, that they just took an era and they ran with it and did their own interpretation of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the most exciting to watch uh, and I've seen like, like a lot of colors too just so yes. many vibrant colors amazing um I was wondering if you've ever created any costumes for yourself a few yeah not too many I would say mostly in grad school as projects <laughs> oh right <laughs> yeah. um I make a lot of costumes for my daughter mm -hmm. oh. I think uh, since becoming a mom, I've created a lot more at home. Um, a few, a few Ren Fair projects oh, yeah. for myself, <laughs> but I find a lot of times I I don't want the attention on me in that mm -hmm. way, right? Um, and so I like to dress up other people. Okay, that's fair. That's <laughs> fair too. Yeah, <laughs> I know that in my case, I always envied those children that did have parents that could sew, like because I always. <laughs> wanted to go the extra mile oh, my <laughs> with goodness. everything I do. Yeah, I, my daughter has already given me instructions for her Halloween costume oh, this year. Oh, yes. <laughs> so what do you enjoy more, teaching costume design or actually working on costume design? Oh, um, both? Equally? Yeah, I, mm. if I only did one, I would sorely miss the other. Hmm. I love being a teacher, and as much as I n loved theater and always knew I wanted to be in the arts, I think I also always knew I wanted to be teaching. Hmm. Simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. Thank goodness I got into a position like this one where I get to do both. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's very common for people to do No, I, I feel very blessed, yes. for sure. Uh, yeah, I love being in the classroom. Mm -hmm. I love sharing what I do. I love watching that sort of aha moment as a student gains confidence in the artistic choices that they're making. Mm -hmm. I, I, I couldn't do just one. Yeah. 
I love that. <laughs> I love that answer. <laughs> Do you have like a favorite teaching moment that that comes to mind, you know, a specific mm. student or a specific problem that they ran into? There are so many students that I'm proud of. Um, I think right now what's in my mind are my students who just worked on uh, a play called Rhinoceros. Um, mm -hmm. So my students partnered with some students at Blinn, Brian, and we put on this performance at the end of April. Uh, and so in my class, there were teams of designers. So I was actually overseeing scenic, lighting, sound, props, Whoa. mask making, and costume design. It's a big job um yeah that's a lot <laughs> but you know those students have never designed a show before Ooh. and they go from learning that process to kind of being thrown in the deep end and making a show and it was so good and wow. seeing that process for them coming from research to sketches to doing fittings with actors and I think sometimes with students, the fittings are my favorite part of the process because mm. it's so hard to get an idea out of your head and on a real body. Right. And then to sometimes recognize that the choices that you made aren't working mm -hmm. and have to problem solve that and watch them do it and do it well. Right. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. And being able to, to watch them work through some of those challenges is right. really fulfilling. I think especially with like a play with Rhinoceros, I, I know it was at Venture it 2023 was, yes. and it was the theater of the absurd, right? And <laughs> I bet the costumes have to match that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think once again, you're taking a time period and then mm -hmm. stylizing a bit. And yes, we made, you know, seven rhinoceros masks, um, you know, so that's a huge design challenge. Oh, yeah. You know, how are we going to turn these people into rhinos? Mm hmm. What advice would you give to someone that would be wanting to start in this art form? Um, I think do research, mm. look at clothing from all over the world, mm. look at the way that the people around you dress, um, people watch. I think that that's enormously important for a costume designer mm. is to really think about what we communicate through the ways that, you know, we modify and supplement our bodies. Right. And that's what dress is. Um, yeah, look at all your favorite movies, TV shows, go to the theater, um, immerse yourself in art and inspiration. And sometimes you find that inspiration at the bus stop. And sometimes it's in magazines, right. um, you know, and sometimes it's going to see wonderful highly funded professional shows mm -hmm. yeah you can take inspiration from anywhere absolutely really. yes definitely um and what would a costume design class look like what are some concepts that are essential you would say for someone to understand yeah we spend a lot of time on figure drawing that's mm -hmm. i think one thing that intimidates people a little yeah. at first i like to i still have some of my first costume renderings from when i was in college um, and then show them some of my more recent work because I think there is a definite progression. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it's good for people to see, like, drawing is a skill. Right. It's something that you practice. It's acquired. Um, yeah, because a lot of folks come in going like, oh, I love clothes or I'm into fashion, um, but I don't draw. And I'm like, well, you do now. Um, <laughs> you better start learning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... Fig, uh, figure drawing, um, mm. trying out different fabrics, learning fiber content, weave and knit and, and how they move and what you can do with them, right. um, and, and learning about the ways that those translate to your medium. So for theater, a lot of times that's thinking about like, how close is your audience? In our black mm. box at the Liberal Arts Arts and Humanities building, you might be inches from your audience. Whereas if you're at a place like Rudder Auditorium, you might be 40 feet away from your nearest audience member. Mm -hmm. And so that obviously affects the kinds of, of designs that right. you're gonna create. There's a lot to think about there, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, what is something about this art form that you'd want to tell the audience that maybe we haven't covered yet? Mm. 
I think sometimes when you don't notice our work, it's our best work. Hmm. Okay. That when the character just feels like they couldn't look any other way, right? And maybe we've got it right. Mm -hmm. It just looks so natural; you don't even question it. That's it, right? Yeah, that wow. that is a humbling lesson to learn for a young designer as well. Yeah, that that you're trying to to make this world in which everything blends into that world, and I bet that's something that's very difficult to do. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Reina, thank you so much for stopping by. I learned so much and I have a sewing machine myself and you just inspired me to take it back out and do start it. working with it. <laughs> Definitely. Will do. Uh, well, thanks again. Yes. Thank you. I'm so happy to have been here. Of course. Anytime. All right, you guys, we will be going on a quick break, but do not go anywhere. We will be right back. Support for KAMU comes from the Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts at Texas A&M University, bringing innovative and culturally diverse visual and performing arts programming to Texas A&M University and the Brazos Valley. The Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts fosters the creativity of our community via the transformative power of the arts. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the KME Studios. My name is Hector Nino, and you're listening to The Heart of Art. We actually have a student here uh, from A&M. He's a sophomore right now, but last year he won the MSC VAC's Art Fest. Uh, he was a first place winner. He is also very young, but he already has a lot of wins under his belt. He's a three-time winner of the VASE competition hosted by the Texas Art Education Association, in which he was a gold seal winner. So this is Luke Costores. Hi, Luke. How are you today? Hi, I'm good. I'm, I'm super happy to be here. Awesome. Yeah, I heard that you're a visualization student here, right? Yes. And that's in the School of Performance Visualization and Fine Arts. Yes, which is new this year. Right. How is that going? It's great. <clears throat> I'm in the animation track currently, mm -hmm. um, which has been presenting a lot of cool opportunities um, and new avenues of art that I haven't gotten to experience before. Um, okay. So it's really great program a lot of great people in it and i'm super happy to be in it right i've i've gotten the chance to interview a couple people from that school and they've all been very impressive um but for my guests here i'd like to go into your background before we go into your art yeah so i was going to ask you where are you from and how do you think that that impacted your love for art yeah i'm from keller which is near fort worth um and i grew up there pretty much my entire life moved a, a little bit around that area um and honestly, I don't know how much that area impacted my love for art as much as it was just the people that were in my life. Um, I would say my parents just encouraged me to pursue art. And it's not something where like they were good at it or they did it growing up, but they mm -hmm. saw the potential and they saw my love for it. And so they created an environment for me to really grow in that. And so I remember stories of like, I'm like three years old, um, sitting in like a, a classroom where my mom's teaching with like, adult scissors just cutting away like paper and um getting markers and, and paint and just painting away um even eating the paint sometimes which is probably not good but maybe that gave me my superpowers i'm not sure but oh, yeah. <laughs> um but yeah i can always remember just always getting into into art since a young age awesome i'm sure that helped your immune system too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little bit. and so your parents weren't into the art world so how did you learn how to paint yeah it was just uh one of those things where I was just a little kid and people said like, hey, you're pretty good. Then I'm like, oh, really? Oh, okay. oh, OK, I guess I'll I'll do this. And so um, my parents tried getting me into some art classes and I, I just did not like them. I hated the instruction and being told what to do. And, and so I would just I would never wanted to go to that. Um, but I was still never quit drawing on my own. And so I think it was just a, a progression of um, getting influences from from different places of just looking at things watching videos um just kind of doing it on my own time which developed into um painting eventually it was just a lot of um pencil drawings as a kid and then high school is when i started to get into more oil and acrylic painting um, and that's where i found a lot of um more freedom and expression of, of what i wanted to do mm -hmm. so would you say you're self-taught 
Yeah, I would say I'm yeah. self-taught. Yeah. Okay. I've had some some great mentors along the way from like a high school teacher um, who really encouraged me to to pursue this like as a possible career, um, and just some professors at A and M currently who are um, really encouraging me to to pursue this as well. I mean, I love that your talent spoke for itself and then you just rolled with it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, so now you being an art student, how do you balance being an artist and being a student? Like, I bet that must be really tough. Yeah, I, I don't get a lot of time yeah. um, in college to necessarily paint and do a lot of the things I did growing up. But being a visualization student, my you know, academics is largely focused on creating, which is a blast. And I'm very thankful for that. Um, whether it's creating short films in, in a class or rebranding businesses in, in another, like they all kind of still get that spark going. And, and so it's not something where I, I lose and come back to every break, which I, I, I get to, to focus more on like some personal projects and, and commissions over break. But um, it's something where even in school, I'm still flexing that muscle and, and learning new, new avenues of, of, to do that. And so the balancing act is, is not – um, that detrimental to, to my growth, I don't think, because while I'm not doing what I usually get to do with oil painting, I'm still creating, and that's, at the end of the day, what I enjoy doing. Right. So it would definitely be more assignment-based, right? What yeah. You're, mm -hmm. oh, cool, cool. And in your website, I saw that you wanted to be a messenger for others. Yes. Um, is that part of your love for art? Yes. That, I think in high school, um, is when I started to realize like, hey, this is probably something I wanna do for the rest of my life. And it's something that, it was just kind of there and um, it came time to do a whole, a whole like series of, of works over, over one topic. And so when I was thinking of like what I wanted to do, I went back to like the root of like, why am I doing art? And I think at the end of the day, seeing like this talent that was just a gifted to me, it, it truly is a gift of, of God to me. Um, and so I wanted to, to be able to honor him through that. And so I took the time to, to talk to some family friends um, and gather stories from, from their lives and um, being able to communicate the way that God, God's hand has been in their lives. And uh, the, the, the series was called, Is the Hand of God a Coincidence? And so kind of taking a lot of these uh, monumental moments in our life where it looks like pure coincidence, but God's hand was in that. And so being a messenger for God came from one of those stories. And, and so uh, it was our family friend who um, had a son and at 14 months old, uh, he passed away sadly. Mm. And so um, it was just a, a really hard time in her life of trying to deal with that. Um, but during that, that grieving process, her sister came to her and, and she said, his, his name was Matthew, uh, Matthew visited me today and she was like, okay, like really, like, I, I don't really want to hear that. He's like, no, like through a, a little bird. And so, uh, that same bird, um, was at the, the day of the funeral chirping and, and bringing joyful music and that bird will follow her like everywhere she goes throughout her life of that's a reminder that um matthew is with god now and, and in a better place and so um she she calls that that story she has a little pamphlet that she can hand people that um god's messenger was a bird and so that was the focal point of the series and i realized that while doing that and creating a piece surrounding that that i was being a messenger for her a messenger for others and, and uh, a messenger for God. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that you went out to search for those stories yourself. Because yeah. I think in your website, you said that um, you were starting to feel like a little biased, but yeah. then you moved on to your own experiences and that just kind of added a whole other layer to it. Yeah. And that's that's huge. Of I, I don't want to be con so consumed in my own life mm -hmm. and to be so selfish as to keep this gift to myself. I want, I would love to be able to, to continue to sharing other people's stories right. um, through different meetings, whether it's paintings or, or short films or whatever. I'm Hector Nino, and you've been listening to The Heart of Art, a production of 90.9 KAMU-FM. You can find all of our shows anytime at kamu.tamu.edu.
The Heart of Art is brought to you by the Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts at Texas A&M University, bringing innovative and culturally diverse visual and performing arts programming to Texas A&M University and the Brazos Valley. The Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts fosters the creativity of our community via the transformative power of the arts. The Heart of Art is sponsored in part by the Texas A&M University Art Galleries, which includes the Stark and Forsyth Galleries located inside the MSC. The galleries provide a variety of opportunities to experience art exhibitions, events, and hands-on activities. More information at uart.tamu.edu.